So this video is for those of you specifically who followed part one and part two of my kind of Proxmox server build walkthrough series. If you followed those videos and your setup's working perfectly for you, great, you probably don't need to do anything, but there have been some users that raised questions on if how I did it was the right way. And since recording that, I've actually shifted things around a little bit. So what I'm gonna do in this video is show you what I did and how to do it. Some of the things that people have questioned is the kind of bind mounting the vault storage pools to other LXC containers. Since then, I've squished everything down into one single container. For example, if we go over over here, and I nano into one of the configurations that you could see I have mounted in mount point one and mount point zero, uh, these little sub volumes from a separate container vault right here. Vault is kind of the manager for all of the storage that I'm using for the servar and Plex instance. And the only issue that I've personally ran into was the having Plex separated as a privileged container, trying to use the uh, DVR recording features on to the vault data storage was giving me permissions issues, which doing what I do in this video has mitigated those problems. So if you run into issues having it all separated out like this, it's just a matter of installing Plex and Docker onto this vault container. So in this video, I'm gonna kinda show you the process for that. I'm gonna show you how to uh, back up Plex and move the uh, configuration files and everything over, uh, how to install Docker on it. But first, we're gonna go over some of the prerequisites and some of the things that we did to these other containers to make it work properly. Cause this one's unprivileged. It is sometimes a little more difficult to get hardware transcoding working, but it's generally a pretty easy process. And the other thing we'll need to do is enable the uh, tunnel. So then we could use our VPN on the initial vault container. So first thing we're gonna do is go over to my actual Proxmox instance right here. And I am just gonna show you the configuration that I have here for Servar, which seems to be working perfectly. So I'm gonna CD into the directory for those configurations and then I'm gonna nano into it. So we have this right here. And what we're gonna to want to grab first is these right here, this LXCE devices allow and the dev net. This is what is gonna make it so we can use the VPN. So I'm gonna copy that over and all this will be available in the description. So you're gonna to want to go into the shell and then nano into the uh, configuration for the vault container or the container that you're gonna want your whole media server stack installed on. And then I am just going to drop this Boop, just like that right in there. Save that out and now it will have access to that tunnel device. Additionally for Plex, we're gonna want this, dev zero, dev one. You can see I'm giving access to card zero. Depending on your system, it might be card one, it might be uh, something else, but I'm just gonna copy this real quick. And then I'm also going to drop this into our configuration here, allowing us for that Intel hardware transcoding. So real quick, I'm gonna save that out. So now we should have access to the VPN as well as Intel. And if you're not sure on the specific card number, if we uh, were still in our shell for our main Proxmox instance. So if I back out of here and go to LS, which is to list all the things in the directory, dev, DRI, DRI, sorry. You can see it is gonna be card zero and the renderer D128. So if I go over here and go under resources, we're gonna see that added right there. I'm just going to reboot this. So let's go to shutdown, reboot, and then go into the actual console for our vault to see and make sure that we can see these cards here. So I'm gonna just log in as root real quick. And now if I LS to dev and DRI, we will see card zero and renderer. So now we know we have that Intel uh, quick sync access right here. Additionally, we can check to see if this uh, unprivileged LXC can see our uh, tunnel. So we can do the same thing, uh, LS dev and it's under net and we can see ton there. If I add a ton, we have access to the device. So now when we set up our VPN, whether that be gluten or whatever VPN tool you prefer to use. Now, since these data structures are the same, you shouldn't really need to do too much work on your actual stack. You should just be able to run your Docker stack directly on vault, just as you do with Servar. So if I CD into root, you can see we have the Docker and data folders there. And under Servar, if we do the exact same thing, CD into root, you'll also see data Docker. So all of our stuff is set up perfectly. So first thing to move this Docker stack over, I believe we originally set this up on Portainer. So we're gonna go over to that instance. So there it is, if I live connect to it, you can see I have all my containers here up and running. And a beautiful thing 
is we did not actually create any uh, volume. So we have everything or all of our data and configurations bind mounted. So again, migrating and moving this is really easy. I'm gonna go over here to stacks, go to our R stack, and then we are simply going to stop all of these containers from running. So let's stop everything. So now that everything is stopped, all we need to do is move over our stack to the original uh, vault LXC that manages all of our storage. So if we are in stacks here, I go over to editor. I'm not gonna scroll down too much because I have all my keys and passwords and whatnot, but I will note and I have to give a big shout out to you guys who are on the GitHub. Uh, submit issues, give suggestions to make this better. One you guys really appreciate it, suggested that I set up a uh, server network with the subnet right here. So then when we're linking all of our R containers, we will have set IP addresses for everything. So if I scroll down here to like Sonar, for example, everything's set up the same, except for now we have network, servar, and the IP address, we give it the one ending in three. So it will always be that even after like an update or the services restart, it doesn't automatically change those kind of Docker internal IP addresses at all, makes it really handy. So real quick, going back over here, I'm going to go to our vault instance under console, and we're just going to install Docker real quick. To do this, I'm gonna switch over to my user, there we go. And using the guide from our site, I'm just gonna quickly grab some of these commands. So we're gonna grab the really quick Docker install script and drop her on in there. Oh, probably go to my home directory here and then grab that. And then we are just gonna simply run the script and there we go, Docker's installed. So now what I'm gonna do real quick is set up my user to manage Docker as non-root. This is a thing I recommend. If you install it with the script, it automatically adds the Docker group. So we just need to drop in this command right here, which will add me to that. And then this command, which will kind of update those groups. So now I can manage Docker without needing to use sudo. Now at this point, if you want to, you can reinstall Protainer and set it up again that way. I'm kind of in the process of just using compose files and not messing with Protainer at all. I, as I learn how to use Docker properly and all the different commands and everything, I find it less and less necessary to use it that way. So what I do now personally, and again, do this however you want, I CD into the Docker directory. And I just reset this up, so let's make sure I have access, which I do. Beautiful. Right in here within this directory, I'm gonna carry a nano compose.yaml file and then just copy my stack just as is so I could copy it and then paste it right into this. So there we go. Everything's good. All the configurations are the same. If I really wanted to, which I'm not going to do, I could go through and like remove this and add a dot since it's within the same directory, but just keep everything perfect. I'm gonna leave it as is. And again, all these now have their own kind of static local IP addresses here. So control O, output that X, there we go. And now I should just be able to run a Docker compose up. And I'm just gonna leave up just to kind of watch it do everything to make sure there's no major errors or anything like that as it starts up all these containers. So we'll give it a minute to pull them all real quick. So there we go, everything's starting up and I'm not seeing any problems. So I'm gonna go control C to stop everything. And then just another uh, docker compose up dash D this time. So everything will be running in the background. And now it's at this point that you can go to your applications. Uh, since we added those IP addresses and all that, you may need to go through and kind of relink uh, sonar, radar, prowler, all those things together again. But since all the configurations and everything are saved in a bind mount, uh, you should be good to go. And you noticed I didn't delete this yet, just in case if there's any issues, I want to be able to fall back onto my kind of original setup here. So I'm not gonna delete it yet, but I am going to shut this down because I technically am not gonna need to use it anymore, but I will keep it present there as a backup just in case. So there we go. Now we get to fight with Plex and I haven't set this up, so I'm gonna pause the video real quick and actually do it so I have a good example to show you. All right, so there we go. I quickly set up that actual Plex instance. So now you can see I have one movie, just downloaded a quick free copyright free movie from here. So what I'm gonna do is move the Plex configuration to the new instance. But first to do that, we actually need to install Plex. So if I go back over here, and we want to install Plex on the initial vault container that again manages all the storage. So over here under Plex downloads, we are gonna to go to Plex Media Server and we're gonna select 
the Linux version. Choose our distribution, which is going to be Ubuntu 64-bit. Obviously, choose the one for your machine. Actually, let's cancel that. Right-click on this and hit Copy Link. Go in here. We're going to wget and then drop it on in to download the file. And now over here to install it, we're going to use a dpkg command. So we're going to just grab that. Drop it on in and point that to the Plex file that we just downloaded. And you can see there we got zero warnings. I'm going to run a uh, sudo apt update. And real quick, just for funsies, let's make it so we can update it through the actual apt command. So if we go over here to enable repository updating, uh, we're going to want to edit this file here. So give that a copy. sudo nano. Drop that in. And then right here, we're just going to uncomment this line. So now if I output that, and run an apt update again, we can see that it's getting from download Plex. So now it should update that way for us. And I might as well upgrade this while I'm at it. Boop, there we go. And now here we have move install to another system. It goes over how to do all of that. There are a couple things you're gonna to want to do in Plex first, such as emptying the trash after or automatically, we're gonna to wanna to disable that. So if we go over to our settings and do it under this Plex server, and I believe it would be under library, and there it is. So disable this option here, scroll all the way down, save those changes, and now what I'm going to do is go over to our initial Plex instance in the separate container, and we're gonna stop it. Systemctl stop Plex media server dot service. There we go, it is now stopped, and we can confirm that by refreshing this. There we go, Plex is offline. So if we scroll down, we'll be able to kind of see where those files are. And then we want this right here, this related page, where are my Plex media files stored? And under Linux, they should be under var lib Plex media server. So if I go over here, and we're gonna check to see if that's where they are, so var, lib plex media server ls we have a library file there or library folder so now we're going to go over here to vault where we're installing our new plex instance and we also want to stop it here so sudo systemctl stop plex media server dot service and there we go with the service stopped here on the new installation we can cd over to var lib and the Plex media server, and we have that library folder there. Now what I'm gonna do, this is the new installation, I haven't done anything to it, so I can just do a remove RF, and then the library folder, sudo remove the library folder, there we go, there's nothing in there now. So we're gonna want to move that library folder from one LXC to the other. There's a number of ways to go about this, but I found it the easiest to just kind of mount the root file system of this into our vault. So for that, we're going to go over to our Proxmox shell PVE here, and then we are going to nano into our Plex container and get the actual root file system. So you can see it right here. I'm just going to grab this, copy it, and then I'm going to mount it to our new vault as just a temporary directory. So if I go and edit the 100 configuration, I can create a new temporary mount point, mount point two or two, the location of the original root file system. And I'm going to set the mount point as just temp and then set the mount point. So I'm going to go over here, kind of have it formatted properly. Mount point equals, I'm just going to do it as temp, just like that. So if I, Output this, save it out, close out, and I'm going to restart this, but before I do, I am going to, I'm going to disable this so it doesn't restart when we uh, reboot the system. I think it's just disable, right? Here we go. So now if we reboot, sudo reboot, there we go, it's rebooted, re-log in, and now let's first make sure that's ls, it is there. I'm going to switch users to Brandon, make sure that Plex is in fact not running which we can see there, it is inactive. So now to copy the files, I'm gonna to travel to the directory that I want them to be. So that's gonna be under var, lib, flex media server. We can see there's still nothing in there. So we're just gonna do a simple, we should probably use rsync because that is a lot of files. So sudo this rsync, oh, this rsync command here. And we're gonna to want to grab this from the temp var lib, Flex media server, and we're going to want to grab that library directory 
and we're just gonna wanna drop it in our current directory also as library. So I think I got the formatting correct. If I don't, we'll fix it. So I'm just gonna hit enter. And then there it goes. It's gonna start moving over everything. Since it was a new install, it wasn't a lot. So cross my fingers. There we go, there's our library. Now we need to change the permission. So if I do LSL, I'm gonna to wanna to give this to Plex and Plex. So if I drop in a sudo chown r plex plex and I point this to library, hit enter. If I lsl, you can see it is now plex plex. So in theory, we can now shut down this old instance of plex. Yes. And if I go over here and then launch Plex, so we need to enable it. System CTL enable Plex Media Server service, and then start it up. There we go. And now when I navigate to the IP address of this server with the Plex port, it should all already be good to go, set up and everything. So if I copy this to 400, there we go. We have Plex and this is my main server. But if I go over here to this one, there we go. So we've successfully migrated Plex over from the dedicated LXC to the main one that houses all of our data, Docker containers, everything. So we squished all of those three containers into one. Actually, before goodbyes, let's make sure our hardware transcoding is working. So let's try to convert this down. Oh, good. It's hardware transcoding. All right. Bye. <laughs>